All right, so in some prior videos, we looked at summarizing vector data relative to areas or polygons. So counting points in polygons, getting the length of lines in polygons. So in this video, I'm going to look at summarizing raster data relative to uh, polygons or zones. So there's some plugins for QGIS and that allow for this. There's also functions in Grass and Saga. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate is the zonal stats tool, which is this built-in and installs with uh, QGIS, and it's in this raster analysis toolbox. So we're looking at zonal statistics. Okay, so I want to open this tool and see what it wants. So it wants a raster layer. That's what you want to summarize. Uh, the band to summarize if it's multi-band. Uh, the vector zones, and you can write a prefix for the field, and then a list of um, at or, uh, statistics to calculate. All right, so here's my grid that I want to summarize, and I want to summarize it relative to counties. So here's all the counties for the state, and as you can see, I have more than I need. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, select out the counties that overlap with the grid. So I'm just doing that by holding down shift and selecting each of the counties. Um, I'm then going to save that in, uh, into a geo package, this West Virginia data one. So I'm going to call this counties sub. And uh, it's, it, we need to click save only selected features. So if you don't do that, that's going to defeat the whole purpose. We'll just get back all the same grids again. And we'll tell it's polygon, and that should work. So hit OK. And that spit out uh, the, that subset of data. I'm going to turn this off now. We don't really need that. And I'm just going to hollow these out uh, just so we can see the data underneath of it. We'll just make them red lines. OK, so now we should be ready to perform our summarization. So I'm going to go to the Zonal Stats tool. Our input here is going to be this um, uh, the, the DEM data, which is this one. Uh, it's a single band again, and then we want to do the data county sub, and we'll put a prefix of LE for elevation, and then for statistics, we'll just do the mean, the median, the standard deviation, the min, max, and the range. Okay, um, so we'll accept that and hit run. Note that this might take a bit of time if you got like a, a larger grid or a small cell size or whatnot. I'm purposely using data sets that aren't very large here, so it won't uh, take very long. Okay, so that's done. And initially, it looks like it didn't give us an output, but that's because it actually writes these values into the, the polygon layer attribute table. So it's not going to create a new data set. Um, so if you don't want to manipulate or change a data set, it might be better to work on a copy of the data. Okay, so if I open up the attribute table here, we got to the end, we can see we have all these elevation statistics now, right? So um, uh, again, it's, they took the prefix that we asked for, and then we have the statistical measure. Um, and then if we wanted, we could, you know, look, visualize that. So go to graduated colors, and we'll just do, uh, let's just do max, so we can see which ones have the, the highest elevation and classify well oh, that's the boundary we definitely want to let's do a fill color instead so do a fill color line fill change this symbology real quick. We'll just set it back to single symbol and we'll just grab a filled symbol first. And then let's go back in and do our graduated symbol symbology. So graduated and we want to use our LE Max field and we'll say classify and then apply and okay so we can see the distribution there so it looks like uh, these kind of things this is uh pendleton county i'm not sure pocahontas county i'm not sure <laughs> pen uh, i want to i think it's pendleton and then grant <laughs> i'm not again not sure so um 
So anyway, that, that uh, summarized that data. So that's for a continuous variable. What if you wanted to summarize a categorical variable like land cover? So I also have this land cover data set in here. So let's say we wanted to get like the percent forest by county. So there's a couple ways to go about doing this. I'm going to start off with a demonstration with zonal stats again. So the first thing I'm going to do is reclassify the raster grid. Um, so we want, or, we, or I guess I'm going to use raster calculator, we could use reclassify also. So um, I'm going to find in this grid all the forested cells. And there's a 41 or 42 or 43. 43. And we'll save that out. We'll call it uh, West Virginia sub 4 dot tiff. And that should do it. And it says it's valid. Okay, there we go. So now we have a 0, 1 grid of forest and not forest. So now if we wanted to do zonal stats again, we could um, grab that recategorized grid. Again, we want to use our, 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 our county data set, and we're going to prefix this now with 4 for forest. And then we're going to do um, a count and a sum. So what count does is it gives you back the number of cells. And what sum does is it, it adds up all the cells. So we basically have a 0, 1 grid. 0 is not forest. So they're not going to get added together, but they will get incorporated into the count. So effectively, we if we get a count and a sum, we should be able to calculate a proportion and a percentage from that. OK, so let's hit OK there and run. OK, and then if we go um, back to that attribute table again, we should, um, if we go back to attribute table, we should have now those force fields. So we've got our four count and our four uh, sum. OK, so let's, go, let's calculate now the percentage from that. So for this, let's grab our field values. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. And then down here to the bottom, we'd want to take the, um, the sum of the cells and then divide that by the number of cells. And that should give us back a proportion. And then we'll wrap that in quotes, or uh, sorry, parentheses, and then multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. And uh, the precision, I guess that I have to set the field here first, we'll call this 4 per. And we'll make it a real number. And it's set to 3, that should be fine. All right, I think that'll work. So let's run that now. OK, so now we should have a new field, percent forest. And we can see the percentages there. So it looks like, let's see, this one is 93. So that was the one that had the highest percentage. Looks like Webster County had the highest percentage. OK. All right, so that's one option. Another option is we can use the zonal histogram tool. All right, so this see this algorithm appends fields representing counts of each unique value from a raster layer contained within zones defined by polygons. So for this one, I'm just going to use the original land cover as opposed to the uh, the uh, reclassified one. And we'll again on the sub, and we're just going to prefix this with land cover. And I 
I think that'll work. And it looks like this will actually spit out to a layer. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to hit run there. Okay. And now we have this output zones, which should just be a copy of the data layer. It's underneath of these raster grids, that's why we can't see it. So we open up this layer. We should have all those values out here. And note it carried through the original attributes also. So this one, unlike zonal stats, it actually creates a new file as opposed to writing it into um, or writing into the original file. So this is the you know, cell counts for each of the categories. And then if you wanted to say calculate percentages, then you should be able to do that using these raw numbers. So that's similar to tabulate area if you're familiar with that tool in ArcGIS. And also you could use these tables and join them and whatnot if you want to associate back to like the original file. All right, there, so they're summarizing continuous data and categorical data relative to polygons.